<laughs> Hello, everyone. I think we are live. Hello. I'm having to watch an ad on my own phone so I can see people's comments. Okay. How's everyone doing? Uh, just mute that. Okay. Can everybody see my iPad screen? How's it going? Hey, everyone in the comments. This is working, I think, really well. If I do this, it's going to update. Okay, through the power of technology. So what I'm going to do in the video today is um, hang out, first, first and foremost. I've been asked by the company that owns my building to run some sessions like this to try and get people to create some stuff at home. Um, they own buildings across the whole country, so we're just trying to get people to create things at home. A little bit of background about me, if you are new, tuning in. My name is Sam. I'm an industrial designer and I work in London. I uh, design products. I um, sketch products and render products. I currently work at a company called Layer Design. And uh, in my spare time, I do things like this on YouTube where I sketch and I share uh, tips and tricks and anything that I think might be helpful. Um, so that's me. The video today, I think we are going to look at industrial design sketching and how you might be able to do some in your own home while we're all sheltering in place. So what is design sketching? Um, I kind of imagine it as a mix between uh, life drawing, like still life, not life drawing, still life. So sketching everyday objects, and sketching things that you see in front of you. Uh, but the difference is uh, the, 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 the sketches that I do, the products don't necessarily exist yet. So you're trying to do a still life sketch of something that could be in front of you, but it doesn't exist yet. And you're trying to do it as fast as you can so you can get on and sketch more things and, and show more designs. Um, one of the first things that people in design school tell you to sketch first is uh, a camera. Now, the reason is, hey, everyone tuning in, I can see your messages. So if you've got any questions, by the way, uh, let me know and I can answer those questions as we go along. Um, so the reason why people recommend sketching cameras is because they're made up of the two most basic forms that an object can have. Uh, those forms are cube shapes and they are cylinder shapes. So if we look at an old sketch, I will be sketching in a minute, but I just want to uh, preface all of this with the theory behind why I'm choosing uh, to sketch a camera. And we can go through and see. So that first off, already, you can see that I'm drawing a box. Okay, now it's going to be a simple box just like this. And within that box, we're going to then build the camera up from that using this as a building block. You can see that I'm also starting to, okay, I sketched again. Uh, I actually sketched this camera a long time ago. So I'm looking at this footage for the first time again in a long time. Uh, the way that I'm using this is on my iPad Pro using an app called Procreate, but you can sketch using pen and paper or post-it notes or kitchen roll or whatever you have handy. Uh, it doesn't have to be on a digital screen like this. You can sketch whatever. So let me know in the comments if you're going to be sketching along with this as well. Um, and we can just go through and see what the, the, the way that I built this camera up with this sketch. So from the box, I'm literally just adding in more boxes on top of that. Um, and then we can just let it play through. So the first thing I did was a box. The second thing I had was a cylinder. And those are the two basic shapes that I need. Anything after that is just making the sketch look fancier, uh, adding in some thicker lines and some shading. Um, so what we're going to do today is to sketch a camera like this. Um, and you can sketch along, you can sketch something else. It really doesn't matter as long as you're creating something. Um, I then went through and started to shade it in, in Procreate. I, I don't think I ever released this shaded camera because I just didn't like how it turned out, but it's live on YouTube now. We can see at the end, it sort of turned out like that. Um, okay, so let's probably do that on our own now by making a new sketch. Um, we'll come over, change the pencil type 
to one that I like. I think I downloaded this new pencil, Narinda pencil. I quite like sketching with this pencil. It makes a darker line than some of the uh, the other pencils. Uh, and a quick shout out to um, Sketchy Day Spencer to, for, for making this pack. I bought his pack of uh, brushes uh, the other day as well. I haven't had a chance to try them all out yet, but I'm on it. Uh, just a quick shout out to those. Uh, you should go check out his page at sketchyday.com. Anyway, hey everyone tuning in. Don't forget if you have any questions about what I'm doing, about what I do for my day job, about what I'm sketching, why I'm sketching, drop them in the comments. Yes, I am a lefty uh, as well. Um, so I don't know if other people have their iPad set up differently, but I think you can change how this section is either on the left or the right hand side. Uh, I have it on the right hand side so I can use my non-sketching hand to start pushing and pulling the buttons over there. Anyway, what I want to start doing is sketching the front of the camera. Uh, actually, what I first want to start doing, because I haven't sketched in a long time, is uh, a warm-up. Now, if you folks follow me on Instagram, you will know that I started my Instagram page to get better at sketching. Uh, and as time's gone on, I've sort of stopped sketching as much as I should have. Uh, and I've moved more into uh, key shot and rendering and things like that. So CGI, computer generated images and, and graphics like that. Uh, I still love sketching, but I don't post it as much. Uh, I, I normally just sketch now on, on post-it notes and, and to get ideas across to other designers as fast as possible. So I, I might be a little rusty at sketching. Uh, but yeah, let's let's try out some, some warm-ups. The reason why it's, it's best to warm up is because sketching is muscle memory. That's all it is. You have to know the theory and you have to understand perspective and things like that. But after that, it's all muscle memory. And uh, literally, I'm just going to try and make the lines as straight as possible. Potentially, these lines are already getting straighter so compared to what I did here and what I did now. And you can see that this is going to help me understand where I'm sat, the position that I'm in. It's, it's all going to change every single time. So to help the muscle memory out, you can just kind of recalibrate when you, when you start to warm up. So I'm just going to clear this layer. And then we can start to sketch the front of the camera so we can understand where those shapes are gonna go. So I think that the camera is gonna be this sort of box shape like this. And in Procreate, it's really good because I can, uh, I can draw a line and then if I hold where that line was, it turns into a straight line. And if I press with my other hand, it then snaps to uh, 15 degree increments. So that's gonna be really helpful for drawing these boxes like this. Again, if you're sketching with paper and pen, uh, those early warmups are gonna be really helpful to try and get you to you know, draw straight lines and uh, make sure that they're parallel with each other. Let's undo that a little bit. So with the camera here like this, I think we're gonna divide it here. Um, like this, round off the corners, maybe just a little bit. And I think there's gonna be a button up here. And the lens, the main point. Again, I can draw roughly a circle and pop it into place like that. Okay, I think there are some questions coming through. Let me, let me have a look here. Uh, do you think the iPad Pro is a must have for a design student? Absolutely not, 100% no. 100 no. Um, the only reason why I'm sketching today on an iPad is so that you can see the screen capture. I do personally prefer to use an iPad when I sketch, that's just me. Um, but the tools that you use as a designer is basically a, a pencil, a pen and paper. And um, then you can use, then you can sketch anything with those things. So um, you do not need an iPad at all. At all. Uh, what does a product designer internship look like and feel like? What is expected from you? I think that's different everywhere. Um, up until very recently, I worked at the same company that I did my internship at. 
And so I knew what, what their internship was like. Um, and then recently I changed jobs and saw from a, a different job perspective what the internship looks like at, at a different company. And it, and it does vary. Um, sometimes you can, you know, it's a lot of helping out with presentations. It's a lot of sketching concepts that might be cleaned up a little bit later on. It's um, a lot of the time helping with the way that the studio runs. So um, setting up for photo shoots, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot like that. It shouldn't be and it should never be like making tea and coffee for everyone or like collecting the mail and that's your only responsibility. Um, luckily, I've been in companies where that hasn't been the case. Uh, my first uh, internship at um, Paul Coxhead Studio, I was very heavily involved um, in, the, in the design process uh, and, and the manufacturing process of the art that Paul Coxhead Studio does at Precipice Design. Um, it's a more uh, consultancy and, and agency side of things. So, uh, you know, I was helping out with presentations and sketching and, and things like that. Um, and it was all hands on deck, you know, like the, the senior designers would also be doing the presentations and I would be doing the presentations. Like, But there was um, there was obviously a, a skill difference. Um, and the job of an intern at the end of the day is to learn as much as possible. Like you are there for your own benefit. So just make sure that you're learning as much uh, throughout that whole time. Uh, I haven't really been sketching a lot while I've been answering these. So maybe I need to hurry up a little bit. Uh, when in final year should you start applying for jobs? That's always a tricky question. Um, there tends to be like, I think jobs try to have a hiring process to co to 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 coincide with um, when people graduate university, so I think that's when, like the summertime, June, July, or August time. Uh, I think that's well. That I think would be the smart time for when companies want to start hiring juniors. Uh, but I think there's there's always time for those types of things, uh, and you just need to maybe pay attention to. Um, Places like Dezine and Dezine Jobs or Yanko Design and look for jobs on there. There are always places, you know, LinkedIn and things like that. There are always places that are going to be advertising for jobs and, um, you know, just keep an eye out, I think. So I'm just going to start adding in some details over here. Maybe it's going to be a classic camera. I thought I'd turn notifications off. So... Do not disturb, I think, only counts when the iPad is locked. Is that right? I hope no one sends me some funny memes or anything. Um, let's keep this safe for everyone. Um, when, uh, where, why did you choose industrial design as your field? So when I was at school, like for GCSEs, sort of like 15 or 16 years old, I was lucky enough to go to a school that offered uh, product design as a, as a GCSE. And I just really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed that class, so I just carried on doing what I I wanted to do, and I just kind of never looked back. There was a small part of me at the time that potentially wanted to do automotive design, but I thought that if I do automotive design, then I'm putting myself in a box that means that I'm just going to be able to do automotive design forever. And if I do industrial design, that's just designing all products like all, pro all, you know, all the different types of products, then I can maybe specialize and do automotive design later. Um, now that I've been in industry for a few years, I've realized that it's the opposite way around. So I know, I know more automotive designers that have transitioned to product design than I know product designers that have transitioned into automotive design. I think it, it, you can switch and do both, but I think there are more automotive design that have transitioned over. Um, but yeah, I just carried on doing what I was enjoying. Um, I'm, I'm really far behind on the on the questions. Let me see. Do you sketch uh, much as a designer or do I just jump into 3D? Sketching is really important as a designer because let's say, for example, I've, I've sketched this uh, flash drive up here. This is where the flash goes. Um, I can... I already made a new layer. I can say, actually, you know what? 
uh, I want it lower or I want it higher, um, just as fast as that, right? Um, I mean, that's cheating a little bit on digital, but you, you get the idea. It's so much faster to just quickly do a sketch and then uh, decide to change it. Or uh, if I'm in digital like this, I can duplicate it, move it down and say, actually, you know what? I want this section to be round and that's going to be round there as well. And then I can erase where I don't want it. Uh, and it's just so much faster to be able to get iterations and ideations out like that. So sketching is really important. And then the CAD and the 3D stuff comes later on. Hey, from Argentina. Hello, hello, hello. Do you usually have problems because you don't know what to draw? I think as a product designer, there's never any issue to, to think about what to draw because, you know, I, I draw products for a living and there's always products around and I enjoy uh, famous designs. So there's always something out there to, to draw. Uh, you just got to start drawing. I mean, I'm struggling at the moment to answer questions and draw at the same time, but that's a different skill, you know, presenting YouTube. Um, but yeah, there, there, there should never be an issue of like, oh, what do I draw? Just because like a good designer gets excited about every type of product there is. Um, so yeah, just sketch what you see, sketch what you want to improve. It can be a rough sketch like this. Uh, let's see the, the place for a, a hand, maybe there. Um, have you used any other drawing tablets like a Wacom or a Cintiq? Um, I have used a Cintiq at university and the, the program that I used on the Cintiq was Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Um, with this camera, I think I'm gonna get a bit crazy. And what if it's like what if it's three lenses in one, like the iPhone is? You know, microphone there, maybe? What if? I don't know. Um, what if the whole point of the camera is now the sensor size, and you can have these three focal lengths on a, on a camera, just like you do on a phone? But the issue with the phone is the sensor size is so small. So what if in each, what if in this camera, Let's do a side on view. What if in this camera, we've got the, uh, let's see, we've got like the three different lenses and that they get focused on one huge sensor. I don't know. What if? That's the benefit of being a designer. You can ask these crazy questions. What's interesting is that um, in my time as a, Working at a consultancy, I've worked with people that have been in the industry for a long time and who retrospectively can say like, oh yeah, we were working with this mobile phone company in 2003 and the insights as a design agency told us that people might like cameras on their, on their phones in the future. Um, and you hear all these stories of like, oh man, you know, this is change that we have the power to change the um the way that industry is like the photography industry because of the insights that the creatives had on the market and realized that you know what if cam what if phones had cameras in 2003 or you know whenever this was that's a crazy notion so what i'm doing at the moment actually is i'm just drawing some thumbnails normally you can try and do like 10 thumbnails in five minutes. Uh, I've been streaming this for 20 minutes and I've done two because I've been answering questions as well. So the point of a thumbnail is to just try and get an idea of like the the overall architecture of the, the, the thing that you're drawing. And then later on, we can start to do like box it and then go, okay, that, that was an awful box because it was just for illustration purposes. Well, I'm gonna clean that up because that was absolutely awful. Uh, let's say like, okay, so I've drawn this over here. So I know that that's going to go about there. This is probably going to go about there like that. And you know, there's going to be a box on top. Maybe it leans back a little bit and it's a lot easier to translate things into 3d if you've already sketched them out in, uh, in, in, a, in his thumbnail format. So let's erase all of that. Cause that was an awful sketch. I don't want to, I don't want people to remember me for that. 
Uh, what is next on the... Uh, uh, yeah, so have you ever tried drawing on the Cintiq or, or Wacom? Yes. How did I start talking about phones when, after that question? Uh, how has it been working at Leia? It's been, well, it's been interesting. Changing, changing jobs about a month before like shelter in place kicked off or two months before shelter in, like it's been weird very strange i was just starting to settle in just starting to learn everybody's names and then i'm home alone uh so it's been strange but you know it's strange for everyone i think so uh and yeah the the, the design process is obviously changed a lot as well very digital now uh, do you do these types of renders, uh, sketches when you're designing? Uh, so these types, yeah, th this is like, this horrible rough sketch is the most, that's the most often sketched type of sketch, right? The, uh, this type, if I come out of here, and, and, and this is something that I sketched for Procreate when they released um, one of their new tools. This sketch is very rarely done in industrial design. Um, it may be done for some promotional things. It may be done to show some clients to try and get them to spend more money on a design. Uh, but a, something like this, it crosses over into more of the artistic and more art. Um, and that's like the still life that I was talking about. Whereas something like this is like, you know, I can show this to a designer and they're gonna understand straight away the type of design that I'm, I'm thinking of. Um, so we try and get as much as these done uh, before we spend five hours. I think this was five hours. It was a paid, it was a paid like um, commission. Uh, I think actually the, uh, we can go to canvas, canvas information, statistics. Yeah, seven hours. I mean, I've been, I don't think it was seven hours because I open up the file every now and again and I talk about it just like I'm doing now. So I think it was between five and six hours that I spent on this thing, two or three years ago now. Um, so yeah, we don't do that in design a lot. It's 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 more like this. Um, oh yeah, the layer watercolor uh, renders. I think they've gone through that in a story on their Instagram page before, but they're real watercolors. Like they are like, real scanned in watercolor uh you know so yeah it's really cool to see them be done because i've been a fan of that style as well and to see the person that does it um actually doing it then yeah it's really cool do you ever see yourself um working for a company that is not in england um potentially um i could but the longer that I stay in England, I mean, I've never traveled further away. Like I was born in England. I, I grew up here. Um, a lot of my friends are from overseas and the respect that I have for them is so high that they, that they are able to make a new life in a new country. It's, 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 it's amazing, you know? Um, but the longer that I'm here, the more that it's like, I've settled here. Obviously, my girlfriend uh, lives here, has a job here. It, it, and the more that time goes on, like the more it'd be harder to to move that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no reason why I wouldn't if, if the right job came up. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, where do you recommend looking for internships and placements? So there's uh, like websites like... Um, Design, uh, Yanko Design, um, Lemonouche. I hope you're writing these down. Uh, maybe I should do an actual, like a dedicated YouTube video on this. Um, LinkedIn Jobs, obviously. Uh, yeah, there's like anywhere, if you type in like any design news website and then type in like forward slash jobs, They've probably got a design page on there uh, for, for design jobs. So yeah, just, just try and find as many as you can. But if you use muscle memory when you sketch, would your shapes and ideas come out predictable and the same? Uh, so the go-to shape and how do you escape this? So the, the, the idea of like 
I mean, when I say muscle memory, it's like, you know, you, you need to remember how to draw an ellipse. Uh, does that mean that all of your designs will become an ellipse? These are terrible ellipses as well. It's been a long time since I've sketched. Uh, you know, does that mean that all your designs will turn out as an ellipse? No, but it means that if you decide to draw something that's going to have, like, let's say we've got the, I don't know, what am I trying to draw here? Let's say we've got like a box, right? And I want the edge to have a fillet, then you, you, you'll be able to like round it all off is, is what I'm trying to say and keep everything in perspective. Uh, and again, another terrible example, but like being able to draw part of an ellipse means that you can draw more complex things with, with that after. So uh, it's just knowing those building blocks. Uh, it's sometimes okay to have at least a vague idea of what the solution to design brief is going to be even before starting the research process. So the, like, the, the ideal way of doing it is to uh, not know what the design is going to be. And then as you research and as you ideate and as you iterate and as you move on with the solutions, the, the, the solution will reveal itself because that becomes the best uh, solution. Um, but, but that really depends on the brief. You know, some briefs come in and it's like, we have a very specific design problem. We, we know how to do it and we want you to like fix it. Just do that. And it's like, okay, um, you know, no research involved at all with, with that, for example. Um, so it depends on the brief. But uh, yeah, the, the best way is to not know what the solution is going to be. Uh, as a designer, would you say it's important to... Ha oh, yeah. Um, knowledge and branding. Uh, yeah, so I worked at, you know, I worked at agencies that specialize in strategy, design, and that crosses into branding and graphics and, and you know, things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's really important. And it, it really depends on what type of design job you want to go for. There's obviously, like, design consultancy, like I do, which is a lot of, you know, a little bit of a lot of things. Or you could go in-house and you wake up every day and, you know, if you work for a microphone company, I'm just looking what's around. You know, if you work for a microphone company in-house, then you wake up and you go, what am I designing today? It's a, another microphone. Um, but you, you can get more in, more detail in, in more depth. Um, so it just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to see everything on a surface level and, and do lots of little things? Um, but that's not to say that as a, at a consultancy, we don't take things to market. And I am by no way, I'm not allowed to become a representative of whatever company that I work for. Uh, this is just my experience. Like some, sometimes we design something as a notion, as a notional design, and we, we, we give that to the client's in-house team and they run with it and do their own thing with it. Sometimes we take things to market and we engineer it ourselves. Like it really depends on the brief. Uh, Animal Crossing. I've seen people play it, but I, I don't have a Nintendo. It's really hard to get an in, get hold of a Nintendo. How much does a designer get paid? I actually did a video on that. I did a video and I, I was really honest about my pay. And um, yeah, it's, it's on my YouTube if you want to go and check it out. I would recommend checking out pages like LinkedIn Salary. I think that's the official name of the... the um, uh, that was a pretty good circle. Uh, so LinkedIn salary, but when you check out pages like that, don't forget that um, only the people that earn more money and want to start bragging about it will tend to fill those uh, slots on, on the website, right? So if I'm earning less money than I know a lot of people are, I'm not going to go in and, and, and enter my details into LinkedIn because, you know, I don't want to think about it. But if I'm earning a lot more money than I know everyone else is, and I can go, oh yeah, I'm going to type it into LinkedIn and say how much I earn. So take all of that with a, with a pinch of salt. It so much depends on the, the company you work for. It so much depends on the city that the company's in. 
Um, there's a big debate because like, let's say that there's a company based in San Francisco, which is very expensive, or London, which is very expensive to live in, but they have external offices in rural places or, or cities that aren't, expensive, aren't as expensive to live in. The whole dilemma is, should, the, should a designer that does the same thing in San Francisco be paid the same as the designer that lives in the rural place when they both do the same job, but their cost of living is, is different? So, you know, it's always on Twitter. Like, do you, do you have a rolling wage based on how much the, the cost of living is? Or do you have a flat wage and say, you know, this is how much you earn. You can work remote so you can live wherever you want. Like, it's, it's a big thing. So it's, it's tricky to get into wages and stuff like that just because it's so different at any company that you work on, uh, work at. Uh, device, uh, advice for graduates uh, working in industry. Um, it's a weird time at the moment, I'm sure. That's a less good circle. It's a very weird time at the moment. And um, just do your best with, with presenting your own work. If you want to carry on work on projects, if you want to carry on working on projects after you finish them at universities and like after you, uh, after the deadline passes, that is 100% okay. Just because the deadline has passed doesn't mean that you can't still work on it. I'm still working on projects that I did at university four years ago. So like, absolutely carry on, trying to make it the best that you can. I always find that at university, I had the skills that I needed when I started, when I finished. So when I finished university, I had all the skills I needed to start, you know. So it's just a constant up updating of the of the portfolio. Okay, I think I've I've been doing thumbnails for enough now. I should have, ideally, as a as a paid professional industrial designer, if I had half an hour to sketch thumbnails of cameras, just in this view, like front on view or maybe a side on view, there should be five pages by now of like maybe far, you know, four or five, eight on a page. I've been going so slow because I've been uh, chatting away, but I hope that, um, I hope that you guys are maybe sketching along at home as well. Maybe you've sketched a lot more than I have. Um, yeah, we're just hanging out. This is really informal to have a deadline of like how many sketches. But I think after I've answered a few more questions, I'm going to start doing a 3D sketch and showing you how I might set that up. Uh, attributes needed to work in a design consultancy. Um, you need to be, let me think, that's a big question. And each consultancy is going to be different. So, you know, the best way to apply for a job is to look at their website, understand them as a company, tailor your portfolio to the specific job that you want to go to, a specific company that you want to go to. But you need to be able to do a fair bit of everything and try and be as nimble as possible. So like sketching, rendering, um, photography, graphic design, like you need to try and be able to do a little bit of everything. Uh, that's going to help out a lot. So we, we talk about being like a T-shaped designer or a V-shaped designer where like the crossbar at the top is your skills that you're pretty pretty good at and you can do a, a whole breadth of things. Whereas the, the, the bar in the middle is really quite like, that's what you really excel at. Uh, so that's quite a good way of looking at it. Whereas a V-shaped designer is obviously, you're quite good at a, quite a few things and then it tapers off and you can do a little bit of everything on the sides. Uh, but yeah, just try and try and be excited by the whole design process. Uh, could you explain about how you make the sketch of the Canon camera draw? Because I don't know how to transform a sketch uh, into that product drawing using only Procreate. I can quickly go through it, but let's not forget that this, like, did you mean this one? The, the sketch of the Canon camera, this is it Canon? Like, let's not forget that this is not a design sketch at all. This is an art piece commissioned by Procreate. Uh, and the, and I, I actually have a, um, I have a, a video where I go through the, the time lapse of this, but the main um, point that I want to draw attention to is that because it was a commissioned piece and because I was being paid for my time and I needed to get it done as fast as possible, you need to work smarter, not harder, right? So 
I took a picture of my Canon camera. I uh, laid out everything on a, on, a, on a white background or as white as I could get it. I even propped up some of the lenses. You can see some blue tack here. There's no shame in this. Like I'm proud that I did this. Uh, some of the perspective wasn't quite right. It didn't line up. So I moved it really crudely by just selecting that, that piece and moving it up. And you know, you can, you can see that. So I've always been open that this sketch has been uh, traced, but I took the picture and I have been in charge of this whole piece from start to finish. Um, that's okay. It's okay to trace. It's okay to work smarter. It's okay to, you know, to, to cut corners as long as what you get at the end of it is what you want it to. So at the end of that, I got a piece that I was happy with and it looked realistic. At the end of these sketches, it's a very different use case, right? So, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, basically I took the picture, I, I traced the box shapes and then I filled in the rest. Uh, and then from that, I can build up the, the color and the, and the shading and stuff like that. Um, hello, everyone joining in. So what kind of brief doesn't really require research? Maybe entertain me with an example. Uh, I've got to try and think of examples that aren't real, but are close to being real. Because uh, obviously it's all confidential, right? So let me think. Uh, let's say that a client has a range of kitchen utensils and they want you to redesign one of their ranges, right? Or like, you know, uh, I want you to redesign this specific knife or this specific spoon to uh, make it look new, make it look fresh, make it so people want to buy it. But um, it's just a very pinpoint design problem, right? Whereas some prob some briefs are like, we think we want to be in this sector as a company. Research what that might look like and design it, you know, and give us some notional ideas of what or which sector should we be in to capitalize on the trends and, and the changes that are, that are going on. And when you start looking at that as like a business strategy design, then yeah, you know, you need all the research. Whereas if uh, you want to design a new spoon, do you, you know, you're going to have some ergonomic research, you're going to have some aesthetic research in there maybe, but like, you know, it doesn't need some research projects for a strategic design consultancy for a business design uh, brief some of those research projects can cost 200,000 pounds, 300,000 pounds, half a million pounds just for the research. You're not going to spend that on redesigning a spoon. So, um, yeah, I've never designed a spoon before, but I had to think of something really quick to, to, to change the confidential side of it away. Uh, do you create transport labels, transport, oh, transparent labels? in Keyshot. So you can import things like PNGs as labels and that's going to be transparent. So that's going to help out a lot. So instead of having a JPEG, which is going to either have a white or a black background or, or whatever background it is, importing a PNG is going to help with that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, can we talk about how you've got your, oh, the setup that I've got. I'm still learning this as well. Um, this is, all new to me, but basically I'm using a program to stream to YouTube. You can't just click go live on YouTube. You have to use a separate program, which captures my screen and captures my webcam in one go, which is how you're seeing my laptop screen, which is this, and uh, my webcam, which is down here, I think. And um, we, if you connect your iPad to your MacBook and open up uh, QuickTime, then you can make a new movie recording and that's going to look for any input and you can change the input to the iPad screen, which is exactly what I've got on there. So it's all in, in one go and all free, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, I, I think I'm nearly getting to the end of the question. So let's, let's clear it. I want to, I want to try and sketch out this for the last 20 minutes or so. I might stay on for a little bit longer, 
But I just think it's a little bit novel to like try and flip what a camera is and say, okay, we've had cameras with interchangeable lenses and we've had cameras that are like point and shoot. Uh, what if we had this? So this might be a zoom lens. This might be, you know, zoom, oh, zoom or telephoto or wide. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be, you know, it doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to be feasible. It doesn't have to have a point for this. We're just having some fun and thinking about what might be. Um, so yeah, I'm going to answer these last few questions really quick. And then for 20 minutes, let's uh, sketch this in th three point perspective or in, in perspective. Um, as a designer, would you say is it important to have knowledge about marketing and branding? Yes, I think I've answered that one, but yes, it would be. Hi from Brazil. Hello. Any views on freelancing? I've done some freelancing in the past. Um, I enjoy it. I, in, I'm self-initiated and I don't really stop working anyway. So as a freelance, it's, it's kind of suits my, the way that I work. Um, sometimes you have no work. Sometimes you have a lot of work uh, and that's fine. So let me think about how I want to do this. Uh, oh. So yeah, as a freelancer, I, I have thought about going freelance in the past. Um, but at the moment, I don't know, I just want to learn as much as I can from a, from a company and uh, take that on from there after that, I guess. Uh, how important is it uh, to learn 3D modeling for an interest of design? Yeah, it's quite important um, to, to learn 3D modeling. There are obviously so many 3D modeling apps out there and um, it's, it's hard to know which one to use. The industry standards, I think, d depending on what company you go to, they're going to use different things. The company that I've, well, the companies that I have worked for use SolidWorks and sometimes Rhino. I personally use Shaper 3D on the iPad and sometimes um, Fusion 360. But SOLIDWORKS and Rhino seem to be like the professional, you could easily, or especially SOLIDWORKS, you can easily pass SOLIDWORKS files to a manufacturer and they're gonna know what to do with it. Um, so that's really quite important because once you're working on a bigger scale in companies, you need to be able to transfer files with each other. Uh, and I've found that SOLIDWORKS is, is quite good for that. A few more, let me see. Tips for young designers, my whole channel is tips for young designers. And I hope that you stick around for the end of uh, this video uh, we're hanging out live but for the rest of the time after that go and check out some of my videos I do some portfolio reviews I do like tips for the industry and things like that I've got a video about working in a consultancy or working as a freelancer and having an interview about that so I'm trying to help as much as I can with my channel uh, hello from Argentina uh, what's your favorite contemporary designer besides Johnny why is Johnny my favorite um I don't know. There's a lot of designers out there that I like. And I'm really a big fan of. There's a lot of designers out there that I do not like. Um, maybe that's maybe that's for another video. Um, but yeah, there, there's so many people that um, that I that I just look up to as designers. One of the biggest, actually, and one of the people that I watch most or I learn from the most is um, Adam Savage. Uh, I learn from him. I and I consider him as a designer. Um, so yeah, like the way that he teaches, like how to how to make things and how to problem solve and how to overcome problems like that is 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 really um, inspirational to me. Uh, yeah, I think he's he's up there for sure. Um, so I'm drawing this box. And there are so many videos out there on perspective and I always feel a little bit weird to go over perspective in my videos because there's, there's so many out there already that do it and explain it a lot better than I can. But as a quick introduction, we're, this, this sketch is currently in three point perspective, which is the most advanced, or one of the most advanced. So if we were to imagine points on, her, on a horizon, now, normally these lines are like so far apart, it's really difficult to draw. So I'm going to, you have to imagine that this is a really long piece of paper. All of these lines that are going off this way, 
I'm gonna have to bend them because the paper is so small. All of these lines meet, like all of the lines going this way, right? Meet on, on that line and all of the lines going this way are gonna meet at that line. All of them, right? If, if they're parallel to each other. Um, there is also a point down here for, uh, if you look at something from the top, uh, it's gonna start having a vanishing point to go down below, right? So anything that's going up and down like this is going to, whoa, very subtly meet at the vanishing point in the bottom. Now, the biggest mistake that I see designers do when they're first starting sketching is to really exaggerate that. Like they will literally draw these points on the page and that means that you're gonna have crazy lines like this and the, and the perspective is just crazy um, exaggerated. The trick is to have some perspective, but also imagine that there's, there's almost none there, right? So these lines are almost parallel and that's almost parallel, but it's just not. It just tapers in just a little bit. If you're drawing a cylinder in perspective, so we want these uh, lenses here, right? In fact, let me let me like add in the box that we want. So that's why my thumbnail sketch is going to be a little bit more helpful. Um, if we want to draw these cylinders in perspective. The way to draw a cylinder is you have the minor axis and the major axis. I don't think that was quite straight, major axis. And the ellipse is going to always, it's always going to um, intersect at these points, right? So we have the, the major axis is this one and the minor axis is this one. This is why I don't describe perspective because I'm not good at it, but we're, we're trying to get through it. This line here is, you can imagine actually in 3D, let me try and draw this. It's like, you can imagine a, a line that's going through it, through like imagine you've got a CD for those old enough to remember what they are and you stick a pencil through it, right? Through the middle. This minor axis line is going to be that pencil. So let's say, for example, it's on this face here and we want to stick a pencil out and draw the circle around that, right? Well, we can follow these perspective lines. That's probably a little bit exaggerated over there. So we can follow these perspective lines and it's probably going to be like this, right? A little bit more exaggerated down here. Actually, where am I? I need to refer back to my thumbnail sketch. It's going to be there. And this one is going to be there. All right. Based on that, uh, maybe that's going to be a little bit further in. Based on that, we've got our pencils that are now sticking out of the camera. We can draw a circle. And in Procreate, this helps me to, to show this because we can literally see the major and the minor axes and where those lines would meet in uh, Procreate. So that's gonna tell us exactly the position that the ellipse needs to be in, right? Uh, so we know that it's not gonna be like this long and we know that it's not gonna be long like this. We know that it's gonna be following like this, the minor axis is going to go along there. And it's going to be roughly that. That is the first time that I have tried to, do, to explain um, perspective in, in any of my videos. I don't know why I decided to do it live. I hope that helps someone. Um, but if, if that doesn't make as much sense to you as you, as you would like, don't forget that there are plenty of videos on perspective out there that, that describe it a lot better than me. Uh, that's going to go about there. And there's one over here. Edit. I don't think I've drawn that line in the right place, maybe, but we can try and cheat a little bit. It's probably going to go about there. Okay. 
Uh, what program am I in? I'm in uh, Procreate at the moment. Uh, oh, I'm missing so many questions. I'm sorry. I can't do two things at once. I'm trying to describe perspective while drawing, while answering questions. But we're having fun. We're just hanging out. This is probably going to come out here like this. Uh, and then this is going to come out here like this. Okay, well, what I'm trying to do is just rush sketch, which is making it look really uh, bad. But I'm going to answer some more questions now as well. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, with the Internet of Things and connected products, will a designer soon be able to use data-driven info for research to generate ideas and solutions? I don't think so. Uh, a computer is only as smart as the people who programmed it. And when you're designing solutions that have never been invented before, you can't program for that. Um, I mean, there are like uh, generative... If you tell a computer, I want this plane to meet this plane and uh, like this this piece of material to meet this piece of material and it needs to be really strong and it needs to uh, use not a lot of material then it can like AI can grow a material and you know you see 3D printers doing that but in terms of t to come up with like whole solutions I don't, I don't think so uh, does the company provide the software uh, programs are already expensive but the company company provides the software which is why uh, going freelance is also tricky as well uh, any tips on posting to Instagram as a designer? Yes, I have a video called How to Get 20,000 Instagram Followers as a Creative. I think it's called that. It might not be, but it's going to be in that sort of similar um, title. But that's on my page somewhere. Um, I think those tips still are relevant today. Instagram changed a lot since I posted that, but I think that there's still, maybe I'll do another video how Instagram has changed since then. Uh, any advice for a final year student worrying about design preparing to go to the real world? Don't worry about it because everyone is in the same boat at the moment. Um, no one really knows what's going on. It's not just you as a new designer or a new graduate. There is no time pressure to, apart from money, there is no time pressure to get a job. You, 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 you don't fail as a designer if you don't get a job within the first three hours of graduating, okay? Take your time, find a job that's right for you. You don't have to rush into anything. It's gonna be okay, okay? Don't worry about it. Is it okay to keep sketches uh, copied from the internet to show my sketching skills and my portfolio to enter into a design school. Oh yeah, if you're going into a design school, uh, absolutely. You know, you can show your sketching that way. Um, it's better to obviously have your own sketches like of, of, of things that maybe you've designed, but you know, I also recommend not trying to just show like, here's my sketching page and here is my uh, research page and stuff like that. Like try and show it, but that, that comes later on. You know what? For designing to get into a design school, like people always worry that they're not going to get into the design school. I, I get it's tricky to get in, but don't over panic yourself by thinking you have to already know it all before you get in, you know? That's where you learn the things, so don't worry about it. What do I think about Blender? Um, I like it. I use Blender sometimes. It's really tricky to use, and I don't like how... Um, how it's laid out and then sometimes I just decide to change it all to make it easier but then we've already learned the old way so I have to re-google everything again um, so I use it for some things it doesn't help me as an industrial designer it just helps me have fun like um, you know I'm doing water simulations or I'm doing cloth simulations for rendering that doesn't help as an industrial designer but it's just fun so uh, yeah I, I like it but it's very difficult to use what pencil am I using? I'm using a Narinda pencil, which I think I downloaded. I don't think that comes with, with Procreate. Um, 
would you consider using a tutorial for videos on Shaper? Yeah, actually, I've done some videos with Shaper 3D. I did some webinars for them not so long ago, or maybe last year, actually, um, where I, that's not right, where I, um, yeah, did some webinars, and then that became videos on their YouTube channel. So if you go and check out Shaper 3D on, on their YouTube channel, you can see those videos. I'm gonna come around there. And what I'm also doing is just, I'm kind of like sketching over the sketch to redesign it as I go along. I'm trying to figure out some 3D geometry as I go. But really rough at this stage. I, uh, this is, I'm gonna do three of these videos, three of these live videos once a week. Uh, same time, same place. Um, and maybe I'm gonna take each, each time I'm gonna take the sketch to the next level. So today it's just been thumbnail sketching and a really rough um, sketch for like a really rough underlay. Next week we can go into like refining and things like that. And by the end of it, hopefully we're gonna have a sketch that's quite nice. So if you haven't been sketching at home, um, that's really cool. Keep your sketches with you if you've been sketching along or if uh, you've been sketching anything else, uh, that's cool as well. Uh, what have been your inspirations? A lot of things. Uh, I've always been into design and creating and my family on one side was artists, on the other side were engineers. That tends to be where design sits. Um, I've always been into programs like Mythbusters and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, just always, all the time being inspired. Uh, how much time did you spend designing all the way till the production? Your gantry desk lamp. Oh, okay, so that was actually a really fun project. That I, it was pretty quick actually to get that project done. I don't know, I wasn't on any specific deadline. So we're talking about the gantry. I have a, a, a desk light that I made with Gantry Design who makes 3D printed lights from designers around the world. And um, I think that was maybe like on and off because obviously I have a day job, I have a full-time job and it's just tricky sometimes to, um, to, to fit designing in. Um, yeah, on and off for maybe like a month, two months. So I've just flipped the screen to try. Sometimes when you're looking at something in perspective, it can look right because that's the first way that you drew it. But then if you flip it the other way, um, you can start to see where maybe the perspective doesn't quite line up because your eye is just drawn to it more. I can flip it back now. Uh, so yeah, maybe two months, maybe three months. I can't really remember on that one. Mm -hmm. What are your views about uh, AI influencing the design industry? We we need to be able to utilize it and use it. Uh, that's, that's for sure, but I don't think it's gonna replace it. I actually went to a talk by, um, oh, I can't remember their name. But they designed the Burning Man structure that is a spiraling, it's a spiraling spire that comes in the middle, like uh, Mamu Mani or someone like that. Uh, and that was all designed using AI and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, but it's about harnessing that power and not, um, um, you know, it doesn't take away from the creatives, but it's about harnessing it. So like that. Uh, perspective, oh, let me see, let me see. Uh, many projects in my portfolio are physical models that don't have designs from modeling software. Is that a bad thing for trying to get a job? At, so if you, so, you know, so if you've built something uh, in the workshop and it's a physical model, that's really cool. Uh, the hour that I said I was gonna be here for is about to run out, but Let's answer it like, I, I'm not in a rush, really. Uh, what might happen is I might get a delivery of food soon, so I might need to go because of that. Uh, but let's just hang out and answer some of these questions. Uh, I'm not really pleased with like, this is what I've come up with in an hour. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm letting myself off because I've, I've been talking and helping and hanging out as well. So there's no rush on this. Uh, how many projects in my portfolio? Oh yeah, so. If it's a physical thing, then that's obviously great. You need to photograph it really nicely and make it look beautiful and give it some context and try and make it look as real as possible. 
Uh, it would be good to show some CAD modeling, um, but it needs to be more in a way of like it was important to the project. You shouldn't just have a page at the very end tacked on saying, oh, and by the way, I can CAD model. It should be like integrated with the design process. So try and encapsulate that as well. Unless you want to go for more of a model making job, that's like, you know, workshop technician or a model making prototyper, then that's, that's cool as well. And maybe, you know, you can go down that route. Um, perspective circles, it, yeah, so, so what I could have done, again, I have not taught perspective before. Um, each circle that you do, right, you can put it in a box. And if you draw that box in perspective, then it, it might be easier to, to draw the circle in it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I have tried to not do that box for a long time, just so that it's quicker to, you know, once you know the perspectives and stuff like that, you can kind of like stop working on the guidelines and the boxes. So I, for me to be drawing the boxes and to then draw the circle within the box, it's kind of counterintuitive for me by that by this point but yeah it, you know for, for people starting out or for people who want to make sure that the, the the perspective is really good then yeah you know you can draw this these two lines then become the major and the minus act no they don't actually do they no they don't they sit uh yeah so they all sit like that as well this line is this line this line, this line. Um, yeah, however works best to get the perspective, however works best for you is, is the right way to do it. Uh, is it okay to copy product design sketches from the internet? Uh, I think I've been through that. I think I've answered that question before. Uh, this whole stream is going to be live on YouTube so we can, you can go back and, and see it as well. But uh, yeah, you can, you can show your sketches, but obviously it's better to show your own designs if you want to do that. Um, just wondering if you find it difficult to be fully iPad based for your 3D modeling and rendering rather than Wacom and, and laptop, for example. Um, Shaper 3D is an app is really good to get a basic, like, a, like block out the design and block out where things are going to go. Maybe if you've got a, a, a circuit board to build around, or maybe you've got, you know, existing mechanical parts, but for the f f fidelity that a lot of designs need, um, you need what's called surface modeling, which is used in automotive design as well and things like that. It's to get smooth, flowing shapes and, you know, a radius on something. Um, there's a lot of mathematical equations to make different types of radiuses and, and things like that. The, the Shaper just doesn't have. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't have. I don't know if the iPad's not powerful enough or I don't know if it hasn't been put into the app yet. Um, but if you want to get really refined um, designs, then you need to look at things like SolidWorks and, and Rhino and stuff like that. Uh, but Shaper is a really great a great way of, of getting started with the design and making sure that proportions work out and things like that. Um, and for uh, designs that are maybe blockier, it, it can work. But if you want to start getting into the flowy shapes, then yeah, SolidWorks is, is a good way to go. Uh, any good websites to find industrial design briefs to help design processes? Uh, it might be a good idea to look at full design briefs. I've, I don't think there's a website out there to do that. Maybe there is. But there are always things on Instagram like the Weekly Design Challenge and the Render Weekly and things like that, which taken on their own as one task, rendering or sketching, doesn't make a full design process. But if you build it out and you know you, you, you do the rough... You do the rough sketches and you problem solve and then you take it through and do this type of sketch and then bring that into CAD and, you know, you can build a whole project out of it. Um, so, yeah, that'd be a really cool, a cool website to build, maybe a, a, a brief generator. Do you think young, young designers rely on digital tools too much? I think young designers, probably me included, but I'm trying not to promote it idealize digital tools and me, uh, think that they are the only way to design something and they think that you need to have them to be a designer. Y you don't need a, a, an iPad to be a designer at all. 
at the very bare minimum, you might need things like Photoshop and Illustrator and Adobe and uh, and InDesign, but there are free. There are all, there are cheaper apps out there as well for that. Um, it, at the end of the day, being a designer is about knowing the theory behind what you're doing, not doing the thing itself. Although I really enjoy doing the thing itself, so I enjoy doing the sketching. I enjoy doing the rendering, but that's worth nothing without the theory of of why you do that or why does this piece need to be thicker than this piece why does this seat height need to be this high you know it's you know you, you need the theory behind it um and without that then the digital tools can't help um do i have a website yes the website is samdoes.design uh, and on there, what do I have? I have some of my process, a little bit about me, uh, a little bit of the work that I've done and my, um, merchandise shop as well. Um, so my, some of my merchandise is on my website. A lot of the merchandise that I have is on YouTube. So you can see like the t-shirts and stuff that I do underneath this video. There will be a, uh, if you're on desktop at least, I don't know how it works on a phone, but if you're on desktop underneath this video is like where my t-shirts are. And that's for, that's with an external company, so I don't have to keep stock of it. Uh, but yeah, on my website, I show some of the work I've done, show some of the process and, and have some of the, um, the, the merchandise on there as well. Uh, it does look like the back of, hello, Emilios. It looks like the back of the, the iPhones. Yeah, the idea was like, what if a camera was about the sensor? Like, what if... I don't know. I mean, you could argue that cameras have interchangeable lenses and, and point and shoots that don't have inter interchangeable lenses already have the different focal lengths because they have a lens that can zoom so far anyway. But what if, but the, the problem with point and shoot lenses is that they're not very good. Like the, uh, with the level of um, blurriness that you can get sometimes. So what if this is like three really good lenses on a camera that I don't like the whole point of this video was to just sketch some cameras. This is th this iPhone multi lens camera with a big sensor is probably really silly and it probably doesn't make any sense from a photography standpoint, but I just wanted to have something to sketch. Um, this has been a bit of fun. How would you go about adding in uh, stitching to a sketch? Oh, so in SolidWorks or Keyshot? Uh, that's a big question that I can go through in another video. Maybe that's a good idea to go through in another video. I've always struggled with 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 uh, fabrics and textures and stuff uh, and textiles and stuff like that. I actually have a watch download on my website with a like a step file to import into Keyshot, and in there you can see that I've included some stitching. Um, I modeled that maybe two years ago now, and if I modeled it again, I'd probably do it in a completely different way. But uh, yeah, it's it, uh, maybe that's a, a different video. Hello from Holland. Hello, thank you very much. What year in university should I start building my portfolio? I think at Brunel, which is where I went, I think one of the modules in first year was to design a CV and a portfolio. Uh, not only that, but it was to design, like once you've designed one, that that project was start, started at the start of the semester. Once you've designed that, you design, you design it again, and then you design it again, and then you design it again, and then you keep going. And then by the end of the semester, you've got like 50 CVs, each one getting better and better and better and better. I think that was in first year. Um, and obviously I didn't use those CVs to get a job because by the time I got into second year, you know, all the projects is updated and all the, all the, you know, but it was that process of iterating on the portfolio. Uh, so start as early as you can, I would recommend. Uh, how do I cite pictures from the internet to use on a mood board in your portfolio? Um, it's, that's a tricky question. Uh, so honestly, I wouldn't cite them. Um, I would try and use photos that are license free anyway, but if you're labeling it as like inspiration and you're not taking claim for that work at all, then, um, then I think you're okay for not citing it. If there's ever any confusion that that might be your picture then absolutely you need to make it clear that it's not your picture. Um, but for one-on-one -on -one 
you know, if you're just in a one-on-one -on -one chat with the person that you're interviewing with, and you know, that's not redistributing or not profiting off that image. And as long as it's clear that that's not your image, I think it's okay to not um, cite it. But obviously if you're gonna put your portfolio online and it might be unclear to other people, then yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. Uh, let me just say, I'm reading, a, there's a two-part question here. So Blender, working on a glass project, really useful for form generation and basically modeling thanks to its procedural non-destructive workflow. Um, so yeah, Blender has its uses um, and, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot more freeing. Uh, you don't have to have so many constraints like SolidWorks. Um, but yeah, uh, designed to poly modeling tools, of course, the precision and the non -com Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Uh, non compatibility be Wrong compatibility for manufacturing. So that's going to be an issue there. Uh, I don't know a lot of colleges outside of uh, the UK, so I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe I should, but it's not something that I've learned a lot about. There is a camera called Light L16, which is 16 cheap camera with 16 cheap camera that works together and compose a mega image. Oh, okay, I'll check that out. Uh, one more question. Let me see. Uh, is it beneficial to do masses industrial design? Um, personally, I, I haven't done a masters, and uh, the only time that I think I've seen people do masters is if they want to slightly change the type of job that they want afterwards. So my, I mean, everybody learns differently, right? I would argue that experience is worth more in industry than theoretical knowledge but i understand that people learn differently and if you want to do a master's to learn more effectively than than getting an experience uh, in, in a job then that's cool um do whatever feels right for you uh if you want to go into more of like the business or administration or more of like the managing side or the the uh the team side and that's cool uh, but for me personally i, I haven't done a, a master so i can't really give a, a definite answer on that one Currently trying to ideate for a personal project, uh, which is gantry style light and struggling to do so. How do you go about designing your, uh, ideating your weight light? Um, there's lots of different ideas and lots of different, like the, I, I went through so many ugly designs before I came up with, with something that I was help, happy with. Uh, it was a lot of bouncing back and forth with the engineers at gantry. They had to understand it. Uh, I've just been, I've just realized that I've been really small answering all these questions and I haven't even been uh, sketching so i'm just going to stop the sketch here we, we haven't really got very far normally if i was sketching this uh without talking and without presenting without answering questions that might take me like um, five to ten minutes and we've been on here for an hour and 15 minutes uh, but let's stop this next week i'm going to pick this up exactly where we left off and we can start to refine this sketch a little bit more okay what i'm going to do in the meantime is um, I can actually chat to you now. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work. Close that. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more questions. Uh, we've got some people still in the chat, so thank you so much for, join for, for joining in, for tuning in. Uh, and let's see what, what questions we've got. Uh, yeah, so with Gantry, I had this idea that I wanted to play with making the, the base look like it's been deformed by the light. I wanted to capture the sense of like this, this 3D printed element was molten plastic, melted plastic, extruded through and, um, and then set. But I wanted to make it look as if it, would, as if it was still squishy, still squashed in a nice contemporary way. So I just had so many forms that were like, you know, squished this, how much, how much is it squash? What is the shape that's squashing it? Uh, and once I had the notion of like, I wanted to make the lights look heavy and the base look squashed, that was like the key element, the key point. And uh, anything that communicated that and anything that got that point across was fair game. And it was all about trying to communicate that in, in the best possible way. So once you have like a cornerstone of the design, then you can like expand how you might execute that. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, there was just a lot of ugly designs before I started to think, oh, okay, you know, these proportions work. And with Gantry as well, it was tricky because I was working to construction uh, uh, constraints that, um, like the size constraints, there's no, we're not allowed any overhang material, no support material allowed. Like there's so many things that you have to like cram the design into. Uh, the constraints are quite freeing because it's, you know, it's 3D printing and you're not looking at mold you know, injection molding and, and draft angles and things like that, but it's just different constraints. So once you've got a cornerstone of the design and once you've got the constraints that you can work to, it's about pushing those constraints as far as you can to, to, to get a design that you're happy with. Um, what is something you wouldn't think of, but you do need to learn if you want to be a successful designer? Uh, it depends on what type of designer you want to go into. Um, so is that, are you going to be like a, a designer that takes things to manufacturing? Are you going to be a concept designer? Uh, YouTube's telling me to take a break. But I think we're back on. Uh, but I can't see the questions anymore. Oh, YouTube, you ruined everything. I think it's, oh, tap to go to comments. Comments have moved. Tap to go to comments. But I can't see anyone else's. Well, what if I pull up this? Hey, I can see everyone. I don't know if I should be showing this screen, but it's the only way that I can show, I can see the questions at the moment. Yeah, I deleted them all. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, you guys can't even see the screen because I've hidden it with my camera. Uh, it's okay. This is live and I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're going to muddle on through. Just trying to find the uh, the question that I was answering. Oh, yeah. What, what, what I wouldn't think I needed to know. Um... Yeah, so are you going to be someone who takes things to manufacture? Are you going to be a concept generator? Are you going to be, you know, someone that does a little bit of everything? And it's all about getting to know the details of each different section. Something that's helped me is I know a little bit about manufacturing and I know a little bit about concept generation. I know a little bit about rendering. I know a little bit about graphic design. And that's helped me with, 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 the, with the way that I have um, worked as a designer. Uh, but it, it depends on what you want to be. So... Um, I can't really answer that, but uh, yeah, no, knowing how to uh, position yourself as a designer that, that knows what type of thing. Uh, okay, one more question, I think. Let me let me see if I can pick a good one. Uh, create a Discord server. I struggle with Discord. I'm part of the Minor Details podcast Discord. Like I like the that's a um, a design podcast, and I'm part of the a Discord. But there's so many people on it. Every time I log on to the Discord, there's like fifty conversations that I've missed, and like a thousand threads, and like and I just get so lost, and I can never keep up with the conversations. Uh, and I want to join in so much. I've been able to join in with like two conversations in the whole time that I've been on the Discord. Just because I can't keep up with everyone, you know, chatting. So maybe we should make a smaller Discord for, for this channel. So it's a bit more, uh, we can like, you know, actually chat. And, and I don't think it would ever be as, as big as the uh, Minor Details podcast one. So maybe let me know in the comments right now. Like, do you guys think... Uh, uh, it would be good to have a Discord and maybe chat a little bit uh, as, as time goes on. Uh, okay, I think we should probably wrap it up. Um, it's been really fun, but I'm going to need to go and have dinner at some point. Uh, I'm expecting a food delivery any minute now. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining in. This chat, this this video is going to go live on YouTube and, and be posted once it's um, once it's like processed and things like that. So we can go through and, and, and see the things I did. So just to recap, I'm going to do three of these 
for three weeks because the the building that that owns my flat has asked me to and, and try and get people to um to sketch inside i think next week and because i'm new to all this i don't know really what i'm doing so i'm just playing it by ear. next week i think i'm going to focus more on sketching less on answering questions um just so that people can see me sketching people can sketch along as well i imagine that if people were sketching along at home um they would have got bored because i'd sketched like three things in the whole entire thing uh so next week i'm just gonna sketch a little bit more than answer questions um and yeah by the end of this this series i think we're gonna have some nice things to, to show so don't forget if you haven't been sketching along this video is gonna go live and you can go back and watch it i'm also gonna go live this week i don't know if you folks have seen a uh, the previous video that i did with bantam frameworks i designed a, a bespoke pair of glasses and in that was loads of screen capturings of like Procreate, um, Sketchbook, uh, Illustrator, uh, Shape of 3D, all those apps. And this week I have uh, compressed those videos into an hour long video. In the video that I posted, the, re the, the recap summary video was eight minutes. So you know how fast they were sped up. I have uh, compressed those into an hour long video and I'm gonna go live to, to just go through that this week at some point. Uh, and you can see almost in real time, the whole process from start to finish. And um, yeah, we're gonna do that this week. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you know, I, I saw in my analytics that 80% of people that, that watch my videos don't subscribe to my channel. So it really helps a lot if you guys subscribe. It really helps a lot if you send a video that you enjoyed to friends. Uh, maybe it can help them out as well. What's for dinner? I actually use HelloFresh. Uh, I, I started um, to try and get myself to cook more, so I don't know what's for dinner. It's just a, a whole HelloFresh. Um, hopefully one day I can get sponsored by them because I, I use their service already. So anyway, yeah. Got some live streams coming up this week. Uh, same time again next week. I'm going to be sketching mostly... Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been really fun. I really enjoyed these videos. And uh, yeah, share more videos if you want with friends because that, that really helps. Um, so thank you so much and I will see you all soon. Bye.